Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this lecture, we will talk about a common dental condition that is known as dentine hypersensitivity. We will discuss what is dentine hypersensitivity and what are the etiological factors that are associated with dentine hypersensitivity. We will also discuss the theories of dentine sensitivity and at the end, we will briefly discuss the management of dentine hypersensitivity. So, what is dentine hypersensitivity? Dentine hypersensitivity is a short, sharp pain that is arising from the, from the exposure of dentine in response to the stimulus such as thermal, tactile, or chemical stimulus. What are the etiological or causative factors that are associated with dentine hypersensitivity? So, those factors, they include gingival recession, uh, maybe due to the number of reasons, and one of the reasons is improper toothbrushing. In this picture, you can see gingival recession in the lower anterior teeth. Due to atresion, uh, due to tooth-to-tooth -to -tooth contact or the night grinding uh, that caused the loss of incisal or the occlusal surfaces. In this picture, you can see loss of incisal surfaces of teeth or uh, of the lower teeth. Due to the abrasion, Due to erosion, erosion may be intrinsic or extrinsic. Intrinsic or erosion is due to the gastric acids, uh, due to the gastroesophageal reflux disease in which the gastric acids, they are refluxed into the oral cavity. Erosion may be due to the turn extrinsic acids as well, for example, due to the oral consumption of cola drinks or low pH fruit juices as well. Uh, after some dental treatment, uh, such as uh, such as tooth whitening, scaling, and polishing treatments, uh, it may be uh, the hydrantine hypersensitivity may be due to the internal or external resorption of teeth. So this this is a pathological resorption, either from the side from the pulpal side or either from the cementum side. When it occurs from the pulp side, it is known as the internal resorption. And when the resorption it occurs from the side of the cementum, it is known as the external resorption. All of these they may lead to dentine hypersensitivity. So three theories are proposed uh, to explain the phenomenon of dentine hypersensitivity. So let's see uh, what those theories are. The first theory is the direct innervation theory. The direct innervation theory suggests that the dentine is innervated directly by the nerve endings. So this is the dentine. This is a picture showing the dentine and the odontoblast. So this theory proposed that the dentine it is directly innervated by the nerve ending. So this is the nerve ending and these nerve endings they can the sensation of hypersensitivity. So this theory is not widely accepted because when the local anesthesia is applied over here, still the sensitivity is there. So it means that there is some other mechanism as well that is responsible for dentine sensitivity. Similarly, in the specialized histological sections, it was observed that the nerves are absent in the outer part of the dentine. And in the few tubules where the nerves are there, they are limited to the inner part near the dentine, near the pulpal surface. So the nerves, they are only present in few of the tubules. Their nerves, they are not present close to the dentino enamel junction. The second theory is the transduction theory. The transduction theory states that the odontoblast, they serve as a receptor. And those receptors are coupled to nerves within the dental pulp. So these odontoblasts, they serve as a receptor. They are coupled with the nerve endings. And those nerve endings, they are present within the dental pulp. This theory is also not widely accepted because uh, the, cell, the odontoblast cell process. So this is the cell process of the odontoblast and this is the cell body. So these odontoblastic process they are not extend extend to the they may not extend to the dentino enamel junction in most of the dentinal tubules 
that's why this theory is also not widely accepted. Secondly, the, the membrane potential of these odontoblasts is very low that is necessary for the conduction of impulses. So th these are the reasons that the transduction theory is also not uh, very well accepted. The last theory or the third theory is the hydro hydrodynamic theory. The hydrodynamic theory it states that the tubular nature of the dentine it permits fluid movement within the dentinal tubule and this fluid movement is registered by the nerve endings that are present in the cell free zone so these this is the fluid and this fluid movement it causes this fluid, uh, this fluid movement is registered by the nerves that are present in the cell free zone just below the odontoblast. So, this fluid movement it is registered by the nerve endings that are present just close to the odontoblast in the cell free zone. This theory is more widely accepted because uh, during cavity preparation, uh, fluid is seen in this area at the floor of the cavity. So, some fluid is seen. It suggests that during cavity preparation, uh, the fluid is seen in these areas. And this further confirms that the dentinal tubules, they are filled with the fluid. And this fluid movement, it causes the perception of sensitivity. Secondly, there is a dentine sensitivity in response to a stimulus such as air, which also confirms that there is some movement of fluid and this movement is registered by the nerve endings that are present just below the odontoblast. Again, I want to show you the etiological factors again. So just a recap. So these all are the etiological factors that, that are associated with the dentine hypersensitivity. So before starting the management of dentine hypersensitivity, it is very important to understand that hypersensitivity is not a disease itself, uh, but it is a symptom of one or combination of the underlying causes that we have just gone through. Therefore, identification of the etiological factor is the first step in the management. Correct identification is important and exclusion of other causes are important such as pulpitis, dental caries, cracked tooth. So you should be able to exclude those causes first. So identification of uh, etiological factor. Then the second step is the patient education. Uh, that is very important uh, for the management of dent successful management of dentine hypersensitivity. Um, for example, when the cause of dentine hypersensitivity is the gingival recession, for example, uh, due to the improper tooth brushing, it is important to explain the patient, explain um, the cause to the patient. Number second, encourage the patient to modify the oral hygiene method. And number three, uh, empower the patient uh, about the correct brushing method. Number third step is the management Management is divided into two parts, uh, in office management and at home. In office management include the chair side application of uh, various desensitizing agents. For example, silver diamine fluoride uh, is a good um, anti-hypersensitive uh, agent. Uh, secondly, at home, uh, desensitizing toothpastes twice daily um, or desensitizing mouth or uh, or desensitizing mouthwash or a combination uh, some toothpastes are available that contain the bioactive glass um, so those um, toothpaste they block basically what they do is they block the open dentinal tubules uh, there's a natural phenomenon as well, for example, the calcium and phosphate ions uh, that are present together with the slivery glycoproteins, they also plug the dentinal tubules. Uh, Follow-up of these uh, cases is essential um, to see the progress of, um, of the treatment. In some cases, there's again need of patient education and uh, in-office and at-home management again.
thank you very much for watching uh, if you have any questions you can ask in the comments stay blessed